Hello, I'm Michael Green, and thank you for joining me for this very personal guide through the findings of the 2021 Social Progress Index. Now, the issue of the moment is clearly about how we're going to balance social progress and sustainability. The world has been on an extraordinary run of progress for the last half century or so, with the global economy growing and literally billions of people being lifted out of poverty. But we also know that that model is running up against a fundamental constraint, climate change. We cannot continue to develop over the next 50 years as we have over the last 50 years without creating a climate crisis. How do we reconcile human progress with climate change, tackling climate change? For some, the only solution is that we have to stop progress. Maybe the world's going to have to get poorer if we're going to tackle climate change. Other people say, well, then maybe the game's not worth the candle and we're just going to have to deal with climate change. What I wanted to do is today is show you a bit about what we've found from the Social Progress Index to show that actually you can have both. You can have inclusive and sustainable societies at the same time. Now, let me begin by telling you a bit about the 2021 Social Progress Index results. Social Progress Index is a comprehensive measure of the real quality of life of 168 different countries around the world measured not in terms of dollars or pounds or euros of GDP, but in terms of the real things that matter to real people. Do I have enough to eat? Do my kids get a good education? Do I live in a society free from discrimination? These are the things we measure in the Social Progress Index, 53 indicators across 168 countries. And here's what we found. And to help me, I, would th I thought I'd list the help of this globe. So here is the world. And uh, so, who comes out top in the Social Progress Index 2021? Well, you may not be surprised to discover that it is, of course, the Nordic countries. And it is Norway that is number one in the Social Progress Index 2021. Congratulations, Norway. Finland, Denmark, and Iceland are pretty close behind. And these top four countries have something in common. Not just being Nordic, but also all having women leaders. Can't claim it's a statistical finding, but there's something interesting going on there. Other countries in the top tier of social progress uh, include the highest performing country in the G7, which is, of course, yes, you guessed it, Canada. Also in this top tier, we have Japan. And then also back in Europe, we have Germany. Is Germany. So these, there are 15 countries that make up this highest tier of social progress, the Champions League of social progress. The next tier down, tier two, are all countries that are doing well, but not quite so well. But they are all high social progress countries. Including in that group is, of course, I'm proud to say my country, the United Kingdom. And we are just one place ahead of France. Now, Mr. Johnson, Prime Minister Johnson, don't get too excited. The gap between the UK and France has been narrowing over the last 10 years. In 2022, will France overtake the UK on social progress? Tune in next year to find out. Um, Italy is also in this group of, uh, of tier two social progress countries, as of course also is the United States. The US comes in at 24th in the world on social progress and really competes a, a pattern we've seen over a number of years of the US really not performing on social progress as it should do for a country of its wealth. And indeed, even worse, the US is actually one of only four countries that's gone backwards on social progress in the last 10 years. The United States seems to have a pretty chronic social progress problem. And indeed, the US has been overtaken on social progress by a number of European countries that 30 years ago were part of the Soviet bloc, like Estonia and the Czech Republic. Indeed, EU countries make up the bulk of the rest of tier two, but we do also have a number of countries from Latin America. Um, Chile is part of, is in tier two of social progress, as is Uruguay. Uh, we also have Argentina in tier two of social progress. And then also, very interestingly, Costa Rica is up there in achieving a tier two high level of social progress. And Costa Rica has got a GDP per capita about the third of the United States for pretty much the same level of social progress. This is a remarkable achievement. Moving on down to tier three. Tier three are countries where there's, you know, there's a lot of wealth, but it's not necessarily shared so widely and there's a significantly lower level of social progress overall. Big countries in tier three are, one is the biggest of all, yes, you guessed it, Russia is in tier three. Russia's actually behind some of its neighbors like Ukraine and Belarus as well, in fact. 
Then other big countries in tier three, we go back to Latin America. And we've got big countries of Latin America, Brazil and Mexico are also in tier three. Brazil's one of those countries that's also gone backwards in the last 10 years. Tier four is a set of countries where there's, uh, where it actually represents where the majority of the world lives. Tier four countries include, of course, yes, China. China is in tier four, um, as are Turkey and Indonesia. Also in tier four, you will find countries like Saudi Arabia, very high GDP, but not so much social progress. Also in tier four, you will find Morocco in 101st place. And Morocco is interesting because it's the country closest to the world average on social progress. So if you want to find out how the average person lives, go to Morocco. Next one down, tier five, is where we've got countries where we see a lot of the residual burden of global poverty. We have India, we have Bangladesh, and also a bit further around, we have Nigeria. Um, and then finally, in the lowest tier, tier six, is where we have countries that have significant governance problems, some kind of failed states. South Sudan comes in in last place. But also in this category, we find both Ethiopia and one nuclear power, Pakistan, is in tier six of social progress. So that's how some of the countries uh, se separate out across the rankings uh, of social progress. We can also sum up progress for the world. And what we see over the last few years is the world has made some progress. So if we think about the world is starting here, and we know that the, there's a big plan to make the world a better place by 2030 called the Sustainable Development Goals. So here's the world today. And let's say here's what it takes to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. How much progress have we made over the last five years? Now, if we're trying to get to the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030, we need to be about here. Yeah? So how far have we got in the last five years? Yeah, only this far. So if we carry on like this, Maybe by 2030 we might get to here, but we're going to be a long way off achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals. There's a big challenge ahead to try and hit those ambitious targets for the world. And a big constraint of that is going to be how do we tackle climate change and keep progress going? Now, climate change is obviously a problem to do with greenhouse gases. And since we're talking about gases, what does that get me thinking about? Of course, balloons. So here is the world's average greenhouse gas consumption per capita uh, at, the, at the moment, which is about 6.34 tonnes per person on this planet. This is an unsustainable level of greenhouse gas emissions that is going unchecked to create a climate disaster. Now, there's a lot of talk about getting to net zero, no gases, but actually we don't have to get that low because, of course, that's net zero and obviously the planet can absorb some CO2 and other greenhouse gases. So it seems that about a sustainable level of greenhouse gases uh, is about you know, 1.74 tonnes of uh, greenhouse gas emissions per person, about this much. So we've got to get from here to here if we're going to tackle the climate crisis, and to do the, which is a huge challenge. And can we do that without stopping human progress? Well, we took a look at some social progress index data and looked at countries at different levels of development and said, well, what's, how, how do countries compare on how much greenhouse gas em gases they admit? And so we looked at the countries in the highest level of social progress, and this is, of course, Sweden. And now another country in the same tier of social progress is Australia. So here's Sweden emitting about five tonnes of greenhouse gases per capita. Australia? emitting five times as much greenhouse gases to achieve the same level of social progress. Hmm. We can then look at the second tier of social progress, and we could say take a country like Costa Rica. Here's Costa Rica, using about sort of four tonnes of CO2 per person, and it's at the same level of social progress as the United States. How much is the US producing per person? Five times as much? No. Actually, six times as much greenhouse gases to hit the same level of social progress. Well, we can go further. We can take a look at uh, an emerging economy in tier four of the social progress index, Ghana. So Ghana, to hit its current level of social progress, is actually uh, within sustainable limits of greenhouse gas emissions. But the same level of social progress is Qatar. 
How much is Qatar's? About this much. So that's about 24 times higher levels of greenhouse gas emissions to achieve the same level of social progress. So when it comes to greenhouse gases, not all countries are equal. Some are taking a huge amount more greenhouse gases than others to hit their level of social progress. So we asked ourselves, what if every country in the world was as good as the best in class in their level of development, in their tier of social progress, of producing social progress with minimal greenhouse gases? And what we found is that the world could hit its current level of social progress, not emitting this much greenhouse gases, but this much. And if we kept on going, we can keep social progress going, staying within the sustainable limits. We don't have a choice between sustainability and social progress. Inclusive growth and sustainable growth are two sides of the same coin. And if our policymakers target the real things that matter to real people and target economies that are inclusive and sustainable, that produce what people really want, real quality of life, without doing so inefficiently by producing huge amounts of greenhouse gases, we can have a world where we see real human progress within sustainable limits. It's our choice to do so. Download the sustainability report from our website. Lots more details on this analysis. We've got details on all 168 countries. We've got scorecards for every country. We've got time series for every country. There's a huge richness of data. Um, tell us what you think. Any questions, comments, send them to us on Twitter, at SOC Progress, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. And finally, I'll say you know, huge thanks to those who've made this happen. Obviously, to the fantastic team at Social Progress Imperative, huge amount of work goes into this data. Fantastic team behind this. But also critically to our sponsors and supporters, um, particularly to Breckenridge Capital Advisors, who are the global sponsor of the 2021 Social Progress Index, and to our strategic partners, Deloitte and the Skull Foundation. Thank you all for watching. Enjoy the data, download the data, and please donate and support the work to keep this going for future years. Thank you so much. Goodbye.